in this video we're going to look at using the query feature in Python in Excel to do various types of queries on an existing data set in Excel. So one thing I need to make clear here though is that Python is very new as of right now and it is only available to Office 365 users who have opted to use the beta version which is like a testing version to see the latest features in Excel. Now if you do have Office 365 and you want to use the beta version I'll put a link in the description of this video on how to upgrade. It's free if you have 365 um, but it is a testing version. It's prone to bugs sometimes, but the upside is you get to see the latest features such as Python. So I'll be sure to put a link there so you can upgrade if you want to. So once you have the beta version of Excel to view Python, you can actually go to the formulas ribbon and about midway is going to be the option to insert Python. So if I click in any cell and select this option, it's going to create a little Python coding box in that cell. What you can also do alternatively is just type equals PY and then tab and that will achieve the same result. So the first thing we need to do is create a data frame and a data frame is just an object in Python that holds data. So it can hold things like two dimensional ranges tables in Excel. So the syntax here is usually just to give it an acronym. You could actually type out the whole word data frame or just use the acronym DF and we're going to set that equal to our range. So I'm going to go select our range. It's going to show a reference to that range and headers true. And to actually hit enter in Python, you actually have to hit control enter. If you just hit enter, that's going to come down on a new line. It thinks you want to add additional code in this coding box. So to hit enter, we're going to hit control enter. That's going to create this data frame and if I actually click on it, I'll click on this little icon here, it's going to show a summary of the data that's in that data frame. So we have the first five rows, the last five rows. If we want to actually see all of the values in that data frame, we can come up to this formula bar here and click on Excel value and it shows everything. But I want to collapse this back, so I'm going to click back on this Python object. And now what we're going to do is create a query off of this data frame. So I'm going to come down anywhere below it. To reference a data frame, you have to be somewhere below it. So anywhere below it, I'm going to enter PY again, hit tab. I'm going to reference our data frame acronym, and then we're going to use the query function. So inside the query function, what we type here needs to be enclosed in double quotes. And I want to query anything from our data set or our data frame, I should say, where the location column is equal to branch one. Now, one thing you need to do here is if your headers have spaces between the words, you need to put underscores in place of those spaces. You cannot have spaces. So we have location, anything in the location column, and an equal sign equality is double equals in Python. So we want anything where our value is equal to branch one. And since that is text, it needs to be enclosed in single quotes. So I'm going to hit control enter. It's going to create a new data frame. So we want to actually see the values. So I'm going to select Excel value and you can see this returns only records that have branch one as the location. You can also see it returns index numbers of each of the rows. So 
a little bit later, I'll show you how to remove that if you don't want that in your results. What I also like about this query feature is it allows you to pull back records based on multiple criteria in a list of criteria. So if we wanted to pull back all records that are in the list, branch one, branch three, what I could do is change this equal sign to the keyword in and then enclose our multiple values in a set of brackets with each value, criteria value, separated by a comma. So branch one, branch three, control enter, that pulls back both of those types of locations. We could also sort this. Now the query function itself does not have a sort option, but what we could do here is make this a variable. So we'll just call this my query. That just creates a data frame called my query. We're going to hit enter to come down and we're going to add a new variable called sorted and refer to our my query and then use sort values if I can type here and the syntax is the keyword by and then equals and with this method you actually have to enclose your column header you want to sort by in single quotes so we have location we'll just start with that hit control enter that sorts by location now what if we wanted two sorts so again kind of in a similar vein up here we're going to enclose that in a set of brackets separated each sort by a comma so then we have loan type So we have a primary sort by the location and a secondary sort by the loan type. Now, if we wanted to get rid of these index numbers here, what we could do is on the end of this, we could say reset index and then keyword drop equals and true. And that would remove this in that index column that was previously there. The last thing I want to show you is how you can format this amount field in an accounting style format. I will admit this one kind of caused me to struggle a little bit. It's definitely not impossible or anything, but it just seemed a bit roundabout based on what I searched on the web. So um, you'll just have to bear with me on this one. So I'm going to come down here. We're going to create a variable called accounting format. And this is just going to be a variable that holds the format we want that column in. So the syntax in Python is a single quote curly bracket, colon, comma, period, 2F, closing curly bracket, closing single quote. So what we need to do here is we're going to refer to our sorted data frame, but we're actually creating a new data frame with a copy of our original amount field. So I'm just going to call this something different, original amount two. So we're going to set that equal to the same data frame, but that original column, because this variable is just going to be a copy of our original column that gets formatting applied to it. So we're going to use the apply method and this allows you to pass the lambda function to it where we have a variable called x where x just represents each value in that field and we use lambda 
to apply our account format style to each of those values. So we just use that we reference that format and then format and then in parentheses X, which represents each value in that field. Now, the final thing we need to do is refer to our sorted data frame one more time and then in a set of double brackets we're going to reference every single field that we want to pull back in our final output. So we have loan ID, location, We want this original amount field two copy that we created because that's the one that's formatted and then loan type. So you can see now we have our results with this column formatted in an accounting style format. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching.